Learn how to motion track a mask in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's check it out. Okay, here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro, and I got a video clip of uh, people just walking in New York. And if you look right here, uh, this young lady that's wearing the New York Yankees hat is going to be our main subject. Now, we're going to pretend like she actually works for the Boston Red Sox, but she's wearing a New York Yankees hat, so we can't let her get in trouble. So what we're going to do is we're going to blur out her face. That way, when the video gets released, no one really knows that it's her and she won't get in trouble. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the blur effect and then we're going to motion, motion track the mask. Uh, that way it will stay with her because she starts out way in the distance and then she walks right in front of the camera and then right off screen. Now, I'm not going to start the uh, blur until she turns around and faces the camera. So if you look right here right now, she's kind of looking off to the left and the camera lens already has some uh, small blur effect just for the lens that's being used. So let's get right up to here. Now she turns her head right there. So this is where we want to apply the effect. So I am going to select the clip right down here. I'm going to come over here to my left panel and I'm just going to click on effects. And then in the search toolbox, I'm going to type in blur. When I type in blur, you'll see there's different ones. I'm going to use the one that's called a Gaussian blur, and I'm going to drag and drop it onto the clip. Now, you don't see anything happen until you come up to the top left and hit effects controls. And then you'll see that right here at the bottom, it says Gaussian blur effect was added. And you have uh, blurriness, and then you have blur dimensions. So right now where it says blurriness, right here where my pointer is, if I come over here, you'll see that it's zero right now. I'm going to go up. And whoa, we're blurring the entire picture. Well, what we want to do is click on the mask. So in Premiere Pro, you have the pen tool, a square, and a circle. And if you click on that, it automatically adds a mask uh, to the clip. So I'm going to click on the circle. And what you see is that now just what, what's inside the circle is has that blur effect. So I'm going to take my uh, scrubber here, and I'm going to move to where she's, we have her face right pretty good in frame right about there. So we need to move the mask over her face and then we're going to grab at the, if you look around the mask, you have these little control points where you can just gr grab and move it and resize it. So I'm going to resize it to where it covers her face and the hat. All right. So let me get it about right there, maybe a little bit more. All right. So that's pretty well covered. And uh, if I click off of the clip, you can see that the blur is kind of a really hard edged blur. You know, it doesn't look very natural. I'm going to click uh, back on the clip and I'm going to click on the word mask at the top left. That way it shows me the handles. Now, the very top right here, you have this little circle. If you click on that circle and drag out, that's what's called a feather. And you probably have used Feather before, maybe in Photoshop or something. And what it's going to do is going to make it not such a hard uh, blur. It's going to feather it out. Now, look back over here under the mask, and it says Mask Path and then Mask Feather. And you can see that it's got a 40.3 right there. You can also, instead of grabbing the circle over there to the right, you can grab these numbers and feather it just right there. So I'm going to feather it out a little bit, and then that way it's not such a hard blur. All right, now here comes the motion tracking part. We've applied uh, the blur effect. We created a mask. We put it over her face because we're blurring out her face. Now right here above the mask path, over here where we added the mask, you've got the controls. And you've got two play controls. One says track selected mask forward. One says track selected mask backwards. And then you have uh, one frame at a time. Now, Premiere Pro will do a pretty good job of going fr frame by frame by itself automatically and tracking the face. So that's what I'm going to do. But since I started with her uh, almost about to go off of frame or out, of, out of camera, I'm going to track backwards. So right here where it says track selected mask backward, I'm going to click it and then it's going to start tracking. And you can see right here that it's tracking and the ma and the blurry mask is following her face. Now this is going to go frame by frame, so I won't make you watch all of this. I'm going to speed this part up. That way we can get to the part where we need to uh, make the fine adjustments. Okay, so my tracking is over. And if we look right here, I'm going to select the mask and I'm going to just play. 
and you'll see that the blur effect tracks her face really, really good automatically without, without me having to make any manual adjustments. All right. Now, there are a couple of things we need to fix. So if you look up here at the effects control, you can see under the mask path, it created all these individual keyframes. All right. So it tracked the motion for us. Here's the keyframes of the mask tracking along her face. Now, since when we first started the um, blur effect, the mask, it was where she's really cl close to the camera. Therefore, it, she is uh, closer to the camera, therefore it's larger. But when the first started way back here, it's going to be smaller because she's in the distance. So we need to change the size of the mask. And what we're going to do is we're going to go, remember, we want to start right when she turns her head. So right here when she turns her head and faces the camera is where we're going to start. So if I look at my keyframes here, it shows that here, oh, I'm sorry, right there. We have all these keyframes before this one. I'm going to select those and I'm just going to delete them. Okay. And anything before this, we don't need the mask. Okay. So in order to get rid of the mask first, where it says mask capacity, we're going to activate keyframes. And remember to activate keyframes, you click on the stopwatch. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch right here. And this is where we want the mask capacity to be 100%. So if I go backwards one frame and I click right here where it says add or remove keyframe, this keyframe I'm going to change to 0%. All right, that way if I rewind, there'd be no mask at all when she's back in the distance, but the mask won't come until right there when she turns her head forward, the mask is going to appear. Now that doesn't change the size, that just changes the opacity. So I'm going to go back to that keyframe and we're going to change the size. And we're going to do the exact same thing as we did with the opacity, except um, what I want to do is change the, right here where it says mask expansion. All right, that's below the mask opacity as mask expansion. So go to the keyframe right here where we first start following her. And you can see how it's too large. Under mask expansion, activate keyframes by clicking the stopwatch and it turns this light blue. That way you know you've done that and it's added to the first uh, keyframe. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower the mask expansion to, and you can also click on the mask and you can see, see what I'm doing when I lower the mask expansion. Even though the circle is the same size, you can see that the blur effect goes from large. There's a mask expansion all the way up and now mask expansion just to cover the size of her face. Now I can also see that my tracking is a little bit off right here. So all you got to do with the tracking when you're on that keyframe is just come over here to the right and grab it and move it to where it needs to go. All right. So that keyframe, we're going to move it. Then I'm going to go over one more keyframe just by going right here where it says, uh, mask path, go to the next keyframe. And if you want to, you can drag it to move it down, go to the next keyframe. And that's, that's what you would have to do manually. If you didn't have the automatic tracking, you'd have to do it frame by frame. Now, all we got to do is play until we notice that the mask is, is not following her. See, now it's above her head. Come over here to that keyframe. All right. And I'm going to see what keyframe I'm on. We're on this keyframe right here, and I'm just going to drag it right there. All right. Now, in order to increase the mask expansion when she gets closer to the camera, just come up here, say she's to the camera here, and now you can see that inner circle that has a blur effect might not be as large. Right where it says ma mask expansion, we're going to add a keyframe. All right. So click right there, add keyframe, and then we're going to take that mask expansion and raise it up to cover a little bit more of her face and the hat. And then we'll play forward until we need to. And then right here, it's not covering up enough. All you got to do, and let me show you where that keyframe is by moving this over. All right, right here, we have to add another keyframe to mass expansion. And then I'm going to use the numbers and raise it up and see how there it's barely covering her eye. If I raise it up, now it's covering her face and the hat. So all you're doing is working with the, mostly the mass expansion 
and your the mask path in order to adjust anything that the automatic didn't do for you. So now if I rewind and play a little bit, it's going to follow the blur effect is going to follow her pretty much the entire time. Now you can come back and make some fine adjustments to the amount of blur, the feather. If you want to uh, blur a little bit more to the hat, you can come over there and add uh, more to the, the blurriness. And you can also come back and mess with your manual keyframes. Okay, so like right at the very end of the video, it kind of stops and then she walks right past and the blur effect is there. All you got to do is come to the very end where you have all the keyframes and you just add more keyframes. All right. So right here is where the last keyframe is. If I go forward one, two frames, you can see how it starts to the blur effect is leaving her. All you got to do is come to where it says mask path, add a new keyframe and then move that blur, move that mask over a little bit to the right, come forward a couple more steps, and then one, two, then you click on there, move the mask, add a new keyframe and move the mask. And it's all done with manual keyframes. And that's it, that's how you quickly add the blur effect, add a mask, and then do automatic motion tracking in Premiere Pro, and then you just go back and you adjust uh, any minor details with the keyframe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.